question to you yeah. is, yes, he did all of that in Lagos, things that right. Um, right. are as apparent as daylight. But the question mm -hmm. is, given the nature of our country and right. the complexities that you and I are familiar with, can he replicate the success story uh, that I recorded in Lagos on this bigger scale of Nigeria? It is even easier, Gide. It is even easier for whoever has the capacity. You see, the, the, there is something uh, about pragmatism. If you conceive an idea, or I conceive an idea, and I give it to you to implement, it's not going to be the same thing. The implementation is not going to come out the same way as if I, that conceived the idea, that envisaged it, had implemented it. Now, on a national scale, it's even easier. Why? Do I say so? Because Nigeria even has, is more endowed than Lagos State. Nigeria as a whole, is more endowed, human, material, natural, you name it. This is one of the greatest countries in the world. And I, I, I with all sense of modesty and responsibility, I'm saying that, and I stand to be corrected, and I can debate it with anybody. There is no state of this country that you visit that does not have one comparative advantage over another, or does not have a natural resource that can be exploited for the benefit of not just that state, but for the entire country. In fact, there are some states of Nigeria that have embedded in its bowels mineral resources that are very rare in the world, or of a quantity that is either the largest in the world or second to the largest in the world and all of that. And these things are largely unexploited, just lying dormant there till today. So for Ashiwaju Tinubu to translate uh, what he has done in Lagos into Nigeria is easy because in Lagos, I knew what he went through in terms of conceiving all of those things, in terms of the, the courage that it took to actually bulldoze some of those public spirited policies and projects and programs into place. Now, in Nigeria, in Nigeria as a whole, oh my, you have resources in every corner, including human resources. And hey, what is actually what you noted for? if not for the ability and capacity to headhunt, to spot talent. That, that is a no-brainer. Everybody knows that. Tell me which of the other candidates has that capacity or antecedent or track record. None. It's him. So it's easier for Ashiwaju to now be given a larger canvas, as it were, the canvas of Lagos. Uh, Lagos, if you must know, Jide, Lagos has the tiniest land area in Nigeria, even though the highest population, the largest in terms of numbers. And it keeps increasing by the day because for all kinds of reasons, you know, ecological, environmental, security, economy, whatever, everybody pour into Lagos daily. I remember many years ago, over 20 years ago, uh, we did a calculation. Uh, a statistical survey. At the toll gate, we discovered that over 33,000 people moved into Lagos every day, and less than one tenth of them returned. That was over 20 years ago. So you can imagine the blood journey population and size of Lagos. Now, today, if, if you did not have a modicum, or substantial uh, capacity, mental capacity, knowledge, vision, and the courage, you will not be able to manage such, such a, a city or a city state yeah. and then raise it, raise it 
to the fifth largest economy in Africa. So imagine okay. if you now have a larger canvas, a okay. larger Nigeria, okay. Fair enough. larger resources. Fair so enough. You, you do a lot more. In fact, the, 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 the developed world will become envious of Nigeria in yeah. under as you are just okay. years. Let, 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 me, let me ask uh, you two questions rolled into one. We yeah. had two recent off-season elections in right. Ekiti and Oshun. The APC okay. won one and lost uh, the other. Given that your preferred presidential candidate is contesting against a battle-tested candidate of the PDP, someone that some people would describe as a serial uh, contestant. Do you really think that your candidate has got what it takes to defeat Anatiku Abubakar? He has got more than what it takes to defeat an article at Bubaka. I just, I just told you now. Uh, you, the first part of your question concerns the uh, the last two elections, the Kitty and the, in Oshu. I do not see how uh, those ones impact on uh, on on uh, my my principal's uh, you know uh, ability to defeat uh, Atiku. In fact, if you if you are, some of us, we just don't deal with, uh, you know, heresies and uh, rumors and stuff like that. Uh, we do we do our research. If you do your research, if you go to a show state today and do a random survey on the presidential candidates, you will discover that Ashiwaju is far ahead of any one of them. And you can replicate that in all the other states. I mean. A, a, a very concise, concrete, and uh, you know, honest sample survey. Now, um, the the PDP candidate uh, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, with due respect, as you said, has been uh, labeled a serial contestant and all of that. But when you look at what I've been saying in terms of the issues that will shape the 2023 elections. The issues are issues of record of performance. They have all been in office, offices. Atiku has been in office as VP. Uh, Ubi has been in office as governor. Ashiwaju has been in office as, as governor. So the rational thing is to just assess them based on their performances when they were there. And again, based on their vision. For Nigeria. What do they have in store for Nigeria? And it's not just rhetoric. It's not just rhetoric. The easiest thing is exhortation, sermonization, uh, polemics, and stuff. No! <laughs> the 2023 election is not going to be about sermonization and hoodwinking the public. No! Because questions are going to be asked. When you had the chance and you were on the driver's seat, what did you do? When you were in office, what did you do? It's not enough to say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Because Yoruba say, if a man, if a man, there's an adage in Yoruba that says, if a man tells you he's going to buy you a new cloth, you have to look at the one he's wearing. Because if he's wearing rags, and he's telling you he's going to, he's going to buy you a new suit, you know that is uh, blowing hot air, and that's a lie. So if a man tells you he's going to transform Nigeria this way, he's going to put in this thing, he's going to institute this kind of a thing, what has he done when he was in office? It's because it is that will form the basis of the trust or confidence that you would have or must have in giving him your mandate to do what he says he wants to do. Richard if a man now. hasn't done anything so far, then there is no basis. So Ashiwaju has demonstrated time and time again and again his capacity to say something and deliver. Ashiwaju is the only one I know in the political firmament of Nigeria today that is a thinker and a doer. 